Here is the radiation pattern of a monopole antenna over a ground plane. We can see that the symmetrical monopole antenna has a symmetrical radiation pattern in the azimuthal direction. On the right side of the screen, it turns out that if we add a single wire or a metal cable along the ground, starting at the monopole and extending radially outward here along the x-axis, we can guide more of the radiation away from the monopole antenna in the direction that this radial is pointing. This is likely how the directionality was achieved for the two AM transmitters, or at least they used probably some approach similar to this. So it appears that the problem we are facing here is an electromagnetic interference problem, EMI. To figure out what's going on, let's consider how AM transmitters radiate. In the last design challenge for this class, we saw how a vertical monopole antenna radiates over the ground. This is very similar to the scenario we have now with the AM transmitters. It's just that the frequency is higher. We have about 1 megahertz instead of 10 kilohertz, like we had before. And the electro electrical length of the monopole is longer. So here, it's probably a quarter wavelength rather than the short monopole we had earlier. However, much about the radiation characteristics are similar here as for the design challenge. So let's consider the electromagnetic fields we obtained in the last design challenge. Here is a plot of the steady state vertical electric fields from the VLF antenna in the last design challenge. So this is at VLF, the 10 kilohertz. The transmitter is oriented along the Z direction. And here we're plotting EZ fields, which means we're plotting the field component that is parallel to the orientation of the transmitter. So this plot doesn't show the direction of the field components that we're plotting. It only shows the strength of the vertical E fields based on position. We just have to remember that these are the maximum vertical electric field values. Previously, we didn't plot the other field components, but we could. For example, here is a plot of the steady state horizontal electric fields, EX, from the same simulation. Considering the right-hand rule, where very generally for plane waves, E crossed with H gives us the direction of propagation, we would anticipate that the EX component, along with uh, HY, would contribute to propagation upwards towards the ionosphere. And we can see that here. The EX fields appear stronger above and to the side of the antenna, rather than horizontally along the ground, as here for the EZ fields. The strength of the horizontal electric field here is essentially zero along the ground. And this also agrees with the boundary conditions for electric fields near a good conductor. The transverse electric field, which is the EX component here, next to a good conductor should decay to zero at the surface of the good conductor. What does this mean for the construction site? It means that we shouldn't need to worry about horizontal electric fields at the construction site. We only need to consider vertical electric fields and how they might interact with the cranes at the construction site. In other words, any metal object that is oriented vertically at the construction site, for example, the boom of a crane that is made out of metal, is capable of acting like a receiving antenna for electromagnetic waves transmitted by the AM stations just 230 meters away. Further, the coupling of this electromagnetic energy from the waves to the crane is optimal if the length of this vertical metal section is a resonant fraction of a wavelength. So the word resonant here is a key word, not just any fraction of a wavelength, but a resonant fraction of a wavelength. So we're talking about lambda over 2, or lambda over 4 length, or lambda over 8 for the, the length here of this vertical metal section. 
In this case, a standing wave is set up along the crane, where the waves reinforce each other as they propagate uh, back and forth along this metal section. And this makes it a very good receiving antenna. So let's investigate this. How well are the cranes acting like a receiving antenna? Let's consider the uh, 1,280 kilohertz signal. Calculate the wavelength for this signal. Check to see if the construction site is in the far field region of this transmitter so that we can know if we can consider the propagating wave from the transmitter to be a plane wave. So let's see if we're in the far field, which is generally more than a, roughly a wavelength. This simplifies the electromagnetic waves that we need to consider if we are in the far field. Also compare the wavelength of the signal to the vertical dimensions of the metal crane. So let's say this is about 60 meters, the vertical section of the cranes that we need to be concerned about.